welcome each one to our morning worship service on the last day of July, July 31st. Tomorrow begins a new month, August. Uh, we're glad for each one that's out this morning. Glad that the seal can be with us to worship with us. And we welcome the uh, Seth Troyer family. Glad that they could be here this morning. Uh, Bill the Pulpit, our pastors at uh, the Armstrong Camp. I believe it's the Armstrong Camp. Uh, so we're glad for them being here this morning and glad for each one of you that's taking time to come out. If you weren't here, you'd be missed. Okay, if you grab your Sing to the Lord, and we're going to begin our song service by page 84. Page 84. I can get mine here. Let's see. Greater grace than our sin.
grace greater than our sin. No matter what we've done, God's grace is greater. And to forgive us of our sins and we'll believe. All right, let's turn now back to page 51. Comes out part of every blessing. Page 51. Jesus, and then someday we can stand in his presence. Okay, now at this time we'll look to the Lord in prayer. I got a few things jotted down here. Let's continue to remember our pastor. Well, he's at, I think this is the last day for the Armstrong camp. So let's pray for our pastor uh, as he ministers there. I don't know what service he'll have there today, but let's pray for him. Uh, and then his safe return. And then just remember our nation today. Uh, we need to pray for America. This is the nation we live in. We need to pray for our leaders. You may not agree with Biden and Harris and uh, their policies, but the Bible says pray for them that we may have peace. Uh, also, our Supreme Court, our local ones state leaders. I'm sure every day that you remember them. Just continue to remember the Ukraine people. Uh, God will give them victory. There's been much loss of life there. I was just told the other day, now I, I, I don't know how accurate it is, but someone said over 100,000 Russian troops have been just killed. That's quite a lot, over 100,000. I'm sure uh, Russia still has a lot more that they can send here to the Ukraine, but... All right, so let's remember the Ukraine people there. They're suffering. The Lord will give victory to them. Let's remember our connectional leaders today. Brother and Sister Blowers, Brother and Sister Joseph Smith, Brother and Sister Dan Kaufman, uh, and then our Bible uh, presidents. So it would be Dan Hardy Sr. and Dan Hardy Jr. Uh, our Bible colleges, all the students at 10 AWC, uh, the students at 10 NIBS, and in my devotions at home, I usually ask the Lord to remember all the students at 10 good Bible colleges here in the United States. 
Because you remember all the teachers, the workers there, uh, the choirs, the quartets that go out for travel mercy. The Lord will use them, make them a blessing. Let's continue to remember our Christian day schools. I'm sure Brother Troyer would appreciate that. We remember uh, Stoneboro Christian day school. Uh, missionaries. We've got one here. Missionaries. We need to remember them. Pioneer churches. I'm sure most of us have one of these. Okay, missionaries, pioneers on them. So you can use this to pray for the missionaries and the pioneer churches. And is we are we going to get new ones? Okay, so we'll get new ones. There might be some changes, but you can use this every day to. Remember your missionaries, your pioneer churches. All right, let's remember our church here. Let's remember each one. Each day, hold each one up in prayer. You know, the devil, the devil hasn't weighing down yet. He's, he's still fighting, and we all need his prayers, don't we? we need, so let's pray for one another here in our church. Uh, I have down here the sick. We've been praying for... Uh, Lori Harrison over here has cancer. We've been praying for Sandra Grable uh, and I think Sister Peak. Uh, these ones, there may be some others. In the Isaiah Rodriguez family, continue to remember this family, uh, that the Lord will comfort them in the loss of their son Isaiah. Family camp coming up here, I believe it begins, is it Wednesday, the third? Okay, remember. Remember uh, Stoneboro Camp? Now, do you have any prayer requests? Anything that you'd like to mention? Dale? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of those Russian soldiers probably don't even want to be there fighting. A lot of them are just young kids. Some of us gave to the uh, Ukrainian when they were taking donations here a few months back. And uh, one of those families bought a house back behind me. Families. All right, let's remember the Russian people and, and the ones that have lost sons and daughters, you know, fighting there in the Ukraine. The Lord will comfort them. Uh, anything else in your hearts? I won't take up too much time. I want to give Brother Troy enough time here. Anything else you'd like to make mention? All right, unsaved loved ones. We all have unsaved loved ones. Brothers and sisters, children, neighbors, friends. Make sure that you carry a burden for. Just pray that God will get a hold of their hearts. One of these days, Jesus is going to come. If they don't get in, they're going to be left behind to face, you know, tribulation. No, none of us know the day or the hour of Jesus coming. Anything else? like to make mention. Just remember Brother Troyer as he has a service today. The Lord will anoint him. The Lord has laid upon his heart and then they are going to be uh, bringing forth a special. So just pray for them. Anything else I'd like to make mention at this time? But I have an unspoken request. I couldn't mention the physical I'll probably be going for surgery here in September for my nose because I've seen the doctor the other day and uh, she said that bone, because I can't breathe on my left nostril since I had that accident, and she said the bone is broken, bent over, covering that passage, so, so she just said that she'll go in there and I'll be able to breathe better. So that's going to be sometime in September.
Alright. I appreciate the prayer there. I told her about my hand. I said I told her my thumb is just like Novocaine's in it. It's numb. Hard to work with. And this finger. Hard to this finger here. And I asked her about that. She said, well, she was, you must have got a, a damaged nerve. When I hit the load on my hand or something, she just said it'll probably eight or nine months and then it'll probably heal itself. Okay, anything else? If nothing else, we're going to look to the Lord in prayer. Brother Young, are you able? Okay, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Just that you'll be headed to camp this week or next it starts on Tuesday and goes Tuesday night and goes through the following Thursday so a lot of days of camp it's close so if you don't feel like staying in those dorms you can always just drive down and spend the day so we hope that you'll be there and just trust the Lord will help us at camp
Well, this message this morning is a result of a truth that I was privileged to hear shared by Reverend Stanley Grable, and he's pastor at our church in Salem, Ohio. And what I have to share this morning is different than his message, but I like the title that he gave, and I'd like to use it for the title for this message this morning. It's simply this, Make No Mistake of His Intention. And that would be, Make No Mistake of the Devil's Intention. Let's look at a couple verses of scripture in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Well known verses. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Thinking primarily about that first verse, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Your adversary, the devil. Now that word adversary means opponent or arch enemy. And you know the devil is against every human soul. And he's against every human soul because all men are created by God. And Jesus demonstrated that love when he came and died on the cross. The devil is against every soul. And we know that verse in Romans that says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And we have the reassuring promise that God is for us. But I want to tell you this morning, unequivocally, the devil is against you. The devil is our enemy. And be assured that this enemy of ours has plans and intentions for each of us. And just as that commanding general of an army has intentions of what he wants to do against his enemy, so Satan has intentions for you and I. And he has things he would like to do with us. But not one of those things is for our good. He's our adversary. He seeks our destruction. Make no mistake of Satan's intention. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Jesus, thank you for these people here this morning. Thank you for this church. Lord, thank you for the light that's shining here in this city. Yeah. We pray, Lord, that you would please be with us today in this truth. Help us to beware and to be vigilant in these days because we have an adversary that seeks to destroy us. Lord, help us today that we would be reminded of that. And Lord, that we would also remember you are on our side and you are with us all the time. Lord, do help us in this truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. The first point that I would like to present to you this morning is simply this. Number one, make no mistake of his intention to deceive. His intention is to deceive. There in, ver in chapter 3 of Genesis, we find these verses. And the serpent said unto the woman... Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman, Eve, saw that the tree was good for food, and there was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You know, Adam and Eve might have been the first ones to fall for the devil's lies. They were. But from that day until this, millions have swallowed his lies and have become entangled in a web of deceit that Satan weaves. Let's give just a little background before we cover this point. His intention is to deceive. You know, from the beginning of time, Satan has been in the business of deceiving. We know of an incident... That happened where Satan led angels in rebellion against God. Satan, or Lucifer as he was then called, lifted himself up and led many other angels in a campaign challenging God's authority. 
For their pride and for their rebellion, Satan and one third of heaven's angels were thrown out. God, you know, he, he still won't stand for people challenging his authority and and he won't stand for rebellion. So those angels and Lucifer were banished from heaven. And, and from that day until this, Satan has made it his master plan to destroy the souls of men in order to get back at God who threw him out. Yeah. Satan's intentions against God are played out in his actions against you and I. And among those intentions is the masterfully crafted plan that he has to deceive men and women. It's not without consequence that Jesus called Satan the father of lies. He's the master of deceit. <laughs> you know the devil's had many years of practice. He's knowledgeable in the art of deception. And he desires to lead men astray. His intention is to deceive. He practices only Deceit. When an English robber called Captain Thunderbolt escaped the law and moved to the eastern United States in 1818, he began practicing medicine. He took on the name of Dr. John Wilson. Often he wore three suits of clothes to try to disguise himself and make himself look larger, and also he was covering up a deformed leg. Just before the man died, he asked his friends to bury him without removing his clothes, but that request was not honored, and the mortician was surprised to find scars from wounds and a withered leg. And a search of his house revealed a stash of watches, jewelry, and diamonds, and the sheriff learned that this Dr. Wilson was in fact Captain Thunderbolt, a thief in disguise. You know, in 2 Corinthians, Paul tells us that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, we like to think of angels as bright and shining, but the devil wants to be an angel of light, deceiving others of his true intention. He's a deceiver. Yeah. Let me share with you just a few of the lies that Satan may cause people to to believe that he may give them. One of his lies is that he doesn't even exist. He doesn't want people to think that he exists. And he also wants to tell you God didn't mean what he said. God doesn't care about you. It's lies from the devil. God can't be trusted. For that matter, God doesn't even exist. Right. He wants to tell you that the Bible is not true. He wants to tell you that sin is okay and hell doesn't exist. I want to tell you he's just forever spewing lies and his intention is to deceive and discredit the truth. He wants people to take a hold of his lies. Right. Perhaps you'll remember this story from a few years ago that occurred in Cleveland, Ohio. I listened to a book about this story and I want to share a few parts of it with you. The man's name was Ariel Castro. He was your regular bus driver for Cleveland City Schools. And for many years, he led a semi-normal life. But then one day, he kidnapped or abducted a young lady, and her name was Michelle Knight. Sometime later, he kidnapped a second young woman by the name of Amanda Berry. Still later, he kidnapped a third young woman, and her name was Gina DeJesus. All this time that he had these young girls, these young women in his home kidnapped, he continued to drive school bus. None of his neighbors knew what was going on, but all three women were locked up in his house. While the story of two of those abductions, Amanda Berry and Gina DeJesus, those were widely publicized. Michelle Knight's family, I think, was not looking for her. They didn't hardly know she was missing, and uh, there was maybe some dysfunction in her family. But those two were highly publicized. Amanda Berry and Gina DeJesus, people looked for them. The FBI was involved, but nothing was turning up. Ariel Castro was able to kidnap each of those young women, at least with maybe a couple of them using his daughters as bait. The two girls, his daughters didn't live with him at the time, but the two girls that he abducted knew his daughters, and so they weren't afraid to get in the car with him. Then he took them straight to his house, and 
and there they would spend years cut off from the world. <coughs> all of the time, all the time that the world looked on and wondered at these highly publicized missing persons cases, Ariel Castro was leading the life of duplicity. He still drove that school bus. He attended vigils for the girls. And he even helped to pass out flyers to try to find them. And all the while, they were locked up in this very house. I tell you this morning, it's a picture of the devil. His intention is to deceive. He desires to make himself look so good while he gets you to swallow the lie that he's telling. Satan's the father of lies. I want to tell you this morning, don't be deceived. Make no mistake of his intention to deceive. But I want to tell you, he wants more than just that. Number two this morning, make no mistake of his intention to dominate. He wants to dominate. Some verses from Luke chapter 4. And the devil taking him, Jesus, up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. You know, Satan led Jesus to that high mountain. We don't know where that was, but from there they looked on the kingdoms of the world. And, and on one hand, we have Jesus, who is God, creator of the universe. And <clears throat> as Paul said, the one who sustains all things, that's our Savior. And, and there on the other side is the enemy of God, Satan, who was thrown out of heaven, owner of nothing but his own pride. And, and that liar, Satan, tells Jesus that, all the kingdoms of the world that he sees before him could be his if he would just fall down and worship him. We know that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. And, and I think we know that he owns all the cities too. Right. It's all his. But the devil here is showing his intention to dominate. And he seems to have believed his own lies to the point that he thinks he owns the world that God created. We know that Jesus did not and never will bow to the devil, but it's nevertheless his intention, the devil's intention, to dominate. Satan wants to be in control. And I'm thankful that Jesus was victorious over temptation, and you and I can be also. Amen. But we have to remember that the intention of our enemy is to dominate us. He wants to set himself up as ruler of your heart. He desires to control men and women and cause them to work against God's plan. Remember, he wants to get back at God. And if he can be in control of souls for whom Jesus died, the devil's pleased. Yeah. You see, the life that God controls, the devil does not. The opposite is also true. The life that Satan controls, God does not. Jesus expressed this truth when he said that we cannot serve two masters. We will only serve one master. The devil is seeking to dominate and take control of men's lives. And, and by taking, taking control of their lives and their souls, he takes control of their destinies. When the devil dominates someone's life and is in control of them, it's not pretty. We see it all the time. You see, the devil doesn't care about people. He only wants to get back at God. And if that means destruction of people that God made, then he's okay with that. When the devil dominates men and women, he builds habits and barriers in their lives that will make it hard for them to get back to God. He knows that if he can warp their mind with his lies and control their heart and soul with his tricks, that he has them. The devil's domination is just the next step to destruction. The devil doesn't care about those who are his. His intention is to dominate. Ariel Castro, that Cleveland kidnapper, as he held those young women captive, was a cruel and controlling captor. He at times had them chained up. Always they were locked in rooms of a house that had most of the windows boarded up. Ariel didn't allow them to bathe. He didn't allow them to have proper restroom facilities, often just giving them a bucket. 
Michelle Knight became pregnant five times, if I remember correctly, and each time he caused her to miscarry his baby by beating her, hitting her, and starving her. While under his care, each of those young women were allowed to watch on television the vigils that people were having for them. Ariel would even purchase a cake to celebrate this anniversary of the time they'd been with him. He was dominating. He was insensitive. He was cruel. Believing the lies of the devil only leads to his domination and his control of one's life. His domination leads to the soul's destruction. Make no mistake of his intention. Oh, he sounds good. He wants to make it sound so good, but he wants to destroy. That leads us to number three this morning. Make no mistake of his intention to devour. We read in those verses there in 1 Peter chapter 5. In that verse we read, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan's intention as he walks up and down on the earth is that he might find some to consume, to devour. The devil isn't just interested in taunting and teasing people and, and just tempting them. He wants to swallow up their souls and, and to banish them to eternity in hell. He wants to devour. A party of tourists was on its way to Palestine. and Its guide was describing some of the quaint customs of the East. And now, said the guide, you're accustomed to seeing the shepherd following his sheep through the English lanes and byways. But out in the east, however, things are different. For the shepherd always leads the way, going on before the flock. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. <clears throat> the group of tourists reached Palestine, and, and to their amusement, almost the first sight to meet their eyes was that of a flock of sheep being driven along by a man. The guide was astonished. This contradicted what he just told them. And immediately he made it his business to talk to the shepherd. How is it that you're driving these sheep? The guide asked. I've always been told that the eastern shepherd leads his sheep. You're right, sir, replied the man. The shepherd does lead his sheep. But you see, I'm not the shepherd. I'm the butcher. That's a story of Satan himself. He drives his subjects and those that he dominates. He drives them as does the butcher to destruction. Ultimately, Satan rejoices to throw his subjects into the fires of hell to spend eternity with him. Eternity in fire, in horror and memory. Eternity in hell. Satan's intention is to devour. Ariel Castro was out of the house one day and for some reason the front door was unlocked. Amanda Berry's room must have also been unlocked. And she and her daughter Jocelyn made their way to the front door. Jocelyn was Amanda's daughter, I think six years old at the time, by her captor, Ariel. Someone heard her cries as she beat on that glass screen door that was nailed shut. And that day, police entered the house. They rescued Amanda and Jocelyn and the two other women that were held captive. The call went out for police to look for Ariel Castro, and eventually he was pulled over. He was caught. Ariel Castro was indicted and found guilty to 937 charges and was sentenced to life in prison without parole plus 1,000 years. On September 3rd, 2013, after spending only several weeks in prison, he couldn't take it. He killed himself. He, the captor, wouldn't be the captive. Let me tell you, there have been some evil people in the world, and we know their names, and we look on in awe or horror of how terrible they were. 
And I want to tell you it's because the devil was dominating their lives. And when people are not aware of his intentions and they believe his lies, Satan will destroy them. Can I tell you this morning, Satan has no plans to leave any doors unlocked. He wants to keep you captive. He wants to so tangle people in the web of deceit that he weaves that they will feel helpless to be released. He doesn't want them to hear God's gentle voice calling to them in their bondage. His intention is to deceive, devour, dominate, and any steps that can be taken to get to that end, he'll do it. Can I remind you of the devil's intention? It's to destroy you. Oh, but let me share three ways in closing this morning that you can defy the devil's intention. I want to tell you, first of all, if you want to defy the devil's intention, submit to God. Submit to God. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Praise the Lord. Submit control of your life to God. He knows what's best. He has a plan, and he'll lead us to heaven. Amen. Submit to God. Number two, if you want to defy the devil's intention, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. The devil doesn't care if you've submitted to God. He wants to get back at God, and, and he'll keep working throughout our lives even if it's been a lot of years, he's going to keep working on us. So that's why we've got to put that armor on. God's given us armor. We call it armor, but really we're talking about being saved, reading God's word, and knowing it, and having faith in God. Put on the whole armor of God, and you can defy the devil. Number three, beware. Beware. We read it in that verse in 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Simply this, beware. Keep your eyes open. The devil wants to trip us up when we're not paying attention. I'm not telling you this morning to always be on the lookout for Mr. Devil, no. But I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus. And when the devil does come around, you'll be ready. Amen. Beware. Beware of Satan's tricks. Beware of his intentions. He wants your destruction. Maybe you find yourself this morning a captive of the devil. Oh, I trust this truth has awakened you to his intention. He has no good intentions. His intention is to destroy. He has no love for you. The only plan Satan has for your life and mine is that we reject God now and share in the punishment God has prepared for him. He wants company in the lake of fire. Make no mistake of his intention. Can I just end with this verse? We've talked about the devil's intention. It's to destroy. But can I just share you in contrast to all of this, would you remember his intention God's intention for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we find these words for, this is God speaking, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's God's intention. It's for our good. God's plan is plain. He's not in the deceit business. He's not going to hide anything. He wants only our best. Let's stand together this morning. Oh, Satan's plan is to deceive, dominate, and destroy. But aren't you thankful we have scripture and we have means God has given us that we can defy him. And we can stand strong in Christ. Praise the Lord. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for these people. Thank you, Lord, for your word and the warnings we have to beware of the devil's intention. Lord, help us each one. It doesn't matter how old we are. Lord, you're still, the devil still wants to fight and to destroy us. And Lord, we're so thankful that you walk along with us 
all through our lives. And Lord, we can count on you. Help us to submit. Help us to put on the whole armor of God and to beware. And Lord, we are promised that you will give us victory in temptation. Lord, for that we thank you. We pray that you'd be with these people. Lord, bless us throughout the rest of your day. Would we yeah. keep it holy in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. Thank you for your kind attention.